If you're buying a car with a dual clutch transmission, here are the three key benefits and the three key negatives that I discovered after driving 10,000 kilometres with one. I'm John Cadogan from autoexpert.com.au, the place where Aussie new car buyers save thousands off their next new cars. Hit me up on the website for that. This is the second in a three-part series about dual clutch transmissions and whether or not you should buy one. Links to parts one and three are located at the end of this video, at least they will be when this series is complete. In this series, everything I learned about dual clutch transmissions from driving more than 10,000 Ks with one. What they are, how they work, the three key positives, the three key negatives, and four critical conclusions, which you'd better heed if you want to buy the right next new car. This video covers the three key positives and the three key negatives that you need to know before paying that deposit and driving off into the sunset. The first big thing to take out here is that you must stop listening to people who say, Oh mate, dual clutch transmissions, they're shit. It's not a binary proposition and it certainly ain't that simple. Granted, the reputation of the dual clutch was terribly tarnished, first by those engineering mismanagers at Volkswagen, which botched the design of its DSG, which is the same thing, only in German, and then just for kicks, they botched the fix. <laughs> then Ford kicked DCTs in the guts with another epic DCT under design called the Power Shift Transmission, and which is now colloquially referred to by owners as the Power Shit. They're still kicking owners in the guts with that today. Well done. But it's wrong to say that the technology is fundamentally flawed. It's just the execution in both of these cases, compounded by tragically poor customer support. The three key positives with DCTs, right? The big one, and you get this every day, is fuel economy. There's a six to 10% fuel saving attributable to that DCT. And while that's not a lot of money in terms of annual fuel budgets for you and me, perhaps, it's potentially a huge saving overall. Look at it this way. If you spend a hundred bucks a week on fuel, the annual saving is going to be three to five hundred bucks. But if this kind of transmission were widely deployed, there's an immense amount of fuel to be saved. Australia drinks about 20 billion litres of gasoline annually, and a 6% saving there equates to 1.2 billion litres saved. The benefits are better national energy security because less dependency on foreign oil, extension of a finite non-renewable resource, gasoline, and less CO2 emission and pollution for any given amount of transportation. And it saves you money. The second big benefit to DCTs is acceleration. These things are actually a little slower off the mark initially than a torque converter auto. But here, I'm only talking about the first few meters from stopped to about running pace. And after that, they really get going. So if you look at zero to 100 k's an hour, that's zero to 60 miles an hour in America, you're actually four to 6% faster, and that is without any engine tweaks. The same engine performance, four to 6% reduction in zero to 100. That's pretty impressive too, I think you'd agree. And the last big positive here is the shift quality for engaged sporty driving. It's incredibly positive, it's fast, it's seamless, and that's because the computer already has the next gear engaged and ready to drive. All a shift really is, is the disengagement of the clutch on the gear train that's driving now and the engagement of the other clutch, and it's really fast. Shifts occur in less than one-tenth of a second and they are ultra smooth. This is when you're in D and also when you're shifting manually with the paddles. 
nothing shifts as well as a DCT. So let's say you're a bit of a performance nut, right? And let's say your partner is emphatically not. You want a fun car, she wants a practical car, you've got a couple of rug rats. You need a car that's reasonably economical as the family taxi and fairly fuss-free to drive to sport, to the shops, to school, whatever. Then, very occasionally, you might enjoy the opportunity to let it off the chain on a favourite bit of twisty back road, if only to convince yourself that it is still possible to enjoy driving in that engaged way. Like, life hasn't cut your balls off yet, at least not completely. You need a powertrain that can multitask, or at least it can do the Jekyll and Hyde thing. And there is your classic, compelling case for the DCT. The unfortunate thing about engineering is that there's no solely good news story. There's always feedback. If you make a car better, it costs more. If you improve the off-road performance, on-road performance suffers. If you increase outright dynamic performance, then refinement is going to take a hit. It's always a balancing act, this stuff, and there are three critical pieces of negative feedback that you need to get on board with before you sign up for a DCT. The first is the transmission's computational challenge of predicting the future. In some situations, this is quite straightforward, like when you're accelerating through 4,000 revs or something in third. Speed is increasing, so it's a safe bet that the next gear you need is fourth. The computer pre-selects fourth, and when it's needed, the clutch just switches over like bam, and you get fourth gear seamlessly and brilliantly. Unfortunately, though, not all driving is like that, and there are plenty of situations in traffic where the future is entirely difficult to predict. And the computer pre-selects, say, fourth, with the gearbox driving in third, and then there is a rapid change in the conditions, and second is, in fact, suddenly required. There is a slight but noticeable lag in these situations when the computer reassesses things and switches from fourth to second and then swaps the gear trains. This typically happens in these dithering driving situations in traffic at relatively low speed. Do not misinterpret what I just said. This is a slightly negative operational characteristic, not a glaring flaw. There's a class of driver who's never even going to notice it. It's a nuanced thing. This kind of transmission is not a bumbling idiot in traffic. Occasionally it gets wrong-footed and it takes about, I don't know, half a second to get its act together. The next negative is a big one, but only for some potential owners. And unlike what I just spoke about, this is a reason not to own a dual clutch transmission, but only for some few numbers of people. You have to be aware of the danger of slipping the clutch under load. This is something that only happens at low speed, like less than jogging pace. And you have to remember, a dual clutch transmission is like a manual transmission. And this problem is just like riding the clutch in a manual. Obviously, the clutch is made of friction material. It's designed to slip and grip to get you going off the mark in first gear. And heat is the enemy. Excessive heat is a clutch killer in a manual or a DCT. The slipping and gripping thing generates heat. So just like driving a manual, you have to minimise that heat. You need to be wary of low speed crawling under load. And it's both of those things, low speed and under load. So let's say you're in a traffic jam, you're going uphill. There's lots of inching forward against the load imposed by gravity, which is tugging you backwards. If you inch forward at speeds lower than those which allow full clutch engagement in first gear, the clutch is going to have to slip to stop the engine from stalling. Significant heat is going to be generated just like riding the clutch in a manual. In the short term, the car will tolerate that heat because the clutch is not especially fragile. But if you keep doing it, you'll get warning beeps. 
This is the car telling you, please stop abusing me. I've never had this happen in the car that I evaluated, but I'm assured that it does. If you still keep doing it, there's a danger that you will damage the clutch and the beeping gets even more insistent, I'm told. Frankly, you have to be very, very mechanically unsympathetic for this to occur. And you can mitigate it really easily by using the auto hold function to prevent rollback on takeoff. It's a button next to the transmission selector in the i30. Then you wait for the traffic to move ahead and you take off positively just as you would in a manual. The same sort of creeping under load clutch abuse is easy to do if you need to say reverse a trailer up a steep driveway. It's hard to do that without slipping the clutch, right? So I'd be rethinking whether a dual clutch transmission is appropriate for you in that situation. Or maybe you can just drive up, decouple the trailer, swing it around and then drive out. I don't know, it depends on your situation. Conventional autos are much better at that kind of manoeuvring though because the fluid type torque converter is much more tolerant of low speed operation under heavy load. And I need to emphasize this, I did not just say never do a hill start in a DCT. Normal driving, hill starts, bit of stop start traffic, having a steep driveway, all completely compatible with DCT ownership. Slipping the clutch under load repeatedly, not okay. Okay? The final negative is about steep hill starts and low speed maneuvering because the clutch is automated, right? And you're essentially driving a car, car and a car with a clutch take up algorithm instead of a pedal. Sometimes that take up response is a little non-linear and this is more apparent the steeper the hill you're on, especially if you roll backwards. So you just use the auto hold feature and this problem goes away largely. You want to avoid rolling backwards and then trying to catch the car with the throttle which drives the clutch take-up response. I'm John Cadogan. In the next part of this series, we will talk about the four conclusions that I drew from this 10,000k DCT exercise and how you can make an informed choice one way or the other. Thanks for watching and the links to the other two reports in this series are coming up next.